everyone, it is Tani and welcome to this update video. I really hope you're doing wonderful this morning and we'll be looking at that frontal system which is making its way toward the Caribbean. So it will be extending into the region and it's going to be bringing impacts as we head throughout the week. Now I'll also be giving you an update in regards to the seismic activity across the Caribbean, the latest earthquakes, and later in this video we'll be looking at the potential for an increase in moisture near the Lesser Antilles. So uh, kickstarting things with a seismic update. Within the vicinity of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, these are the latest uh, earthquakes which have happened. They haven't been strong, they've been minor earthquakes. And that is something that is pretty much normal. So there was one just offshore Haiti within the Dominican Republic and several uh, in parts of southern Puerto Rico and within the general area, which is something very common, as I said. And there was also another offshore Guadalupe in Dominica yesterday in the afternoon, estimated to be a magnitude 3.3. And it wasn't very deep either, so some persons may have felt a brief jolt, but nothing intense has happened, thankfully, across the region. As, uh, as of lately and then going back to the frontal system now we're looking at a closer view of the caribbean we can see all that activity moving through parts of central america near cuba and up towards sections of the u.s so there is some rainfall activity that is affecting parts of mexico as well as northern belize not for everywhere but some areas may be getting some showers this morning similar story for northern guatemala and even for western cuba up into much of florida as well into near the northwestern bahamas and elsewhere in the caribbean we're not seeing that much is happening and by the way there's still some saharan dust around a bit has managed to push further to the west and may bring some hazy conditions to parts of jamaica cuba even into the central bahamas as well but another little plume is going to be moving into parts of the windward islands trinidad tobacco barbados grenada the grenadine saint vincent saint lucia and south america has certainly been uh, experience in this dust for some time so it has been loitering around and the frontal system is eventually going to be helping out with it that this is the rainfall forecast for today and we're seeing that it's getting quite colorful in the caribbean so as i expected with this frontal system there would be an increase in rainfall and that is what we see expected throughout today so across parts of mexico guatemala belize also going towards Honduras and near the Bay Islands, there may be some substantial rainfall in some areas. Some periods of heavy downpours will be possible. And it is a similar story over in western Cuba and for the northwestern Bahamas and up toward Florida, which is already experiencing some periods of heavy rain. Elsewhere, though, across the central and southern Bahamas, we're seeing that it's likely to be mostly dry today. Also for parts of eastern Cuba, sections of Jamaica, there may be some showers moving by, same story for the Cayman Islands and some spots over in Hispaniola, but for the most part, much precipitation is not expected. As we head further east toward the uh, Lesser Antilles, we've got the trades coming in. We've got those little cloud clusters from the east that may bring a brief shower here or there. ABC Islands, though, today is likely to be a pretty sunny and windy day northern south america so we can see that much is not expected for the guyanas nor for venezuela but over in the eastern pacific and near the pacific coast of colombia will remain active even sections of panama and costa rica as well the wind forecast for today so it is likely to be quite windy within the vicinity of the abc islands as i said so some of these winds could be over 25 knots with higher gusts up to around 30 knots or so and it may also be a windy day across other areas such as jamaica the cayman islands over toward the bay islands of honduras offshore belize as well as in mexico and we're especially seen in the Gulf, all these dark blue shadings, even those greens popping up. So there could definitely be those tropical storm force winds at times with much higher gusts. But overall for the Caribbean, winds could be anywhere from around 10, going up to 15 and over 20 knots at maximum. And then for the Bahamas, similar story, up to 10, 15 knots. Not going to be very, very windy for the short term though. With the passage off the front as we head throughout the week, that cooler air is going to be setting in. This is the GFS forecast for Thursday and we can see these blue shadings which indicate below average temperatures across the Caribbean and uh, Euro is also in agreement with this. This is for Wednesday. We can see that cooler air setting in and then as we head toward uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, we still see it lingering around much of the Caribbean. So winds are going to be from the north and there is going to be that dip in temperatures coupled with the rainfall expected 
and the windy conditions across some areas as well. So that's going to be the story throughout much of this week. Now let us talk about that potential increase in moisture within the vicinity of the Lesser Antilles. GFS is the only model that goes uh, pretty far out. It goes the furthest out compared to the other models such as Euro, the Canadian model icon, and it has been showing an increase in moisture near the Lesser Antilles for the past couple of days. It has been changing a lot in terms of where exactly this could happen, whether it could be a bit further south or just north of the Caribbean islands, but it has been showing an increase in moisture along with an area of low pressure actually developing. Let's look at the runs. This is the latest run here and uh, we can see all of these green and these yellow spots as well indicating that increase in moisture and that would be from a second front, not the current frontal system but another one that would make its way out. So this is for next Wednesday and then as we're going to be heading into Thursday there we see that airflow pressure developing in association with all that increase in moisture. But the previous run before this at 0z uh, it showed this system a little bit further south and there we see that area of low pressure as though we may see some sort of subtropical cyclone develop. Now what's the frequency of this in February, March? Well, there have been only three since reliable records began. So there have only been three systems, two in February, one in March that have developed. And uh, it is certainly not impossible, but it will all be dependent on whether conditions are favorable or not. And usually in the off season months, conditions are very unfavorable, especially the wind shear. And that's uh, kind of the main problem right now with anything that may even try to develop at this time of year. But the sea surface temperatures are very warm, well above average. We're looking at the anomaly map right here. And these orange red shadings indicate above average temperatures. And by the way, last month in January 2024 was the warmest January on record. So it is still definitely warm out of there, but that's not the only factor that would influence any sort of subtropical or tropical development. But to see that February, March, it is not something common at all. So I think there may be an increase in moisture. However, in terms of seeing actual development of something, we'll definitely have to wait and see for that. And as I said, GFS is the only model that goes that far out. And there have been quite a number of adjustments. So seeing something actually develop a tropical or subtropical cyclone uh, that is very infrequent. The last time it happened was back in 1952. So that's over 70 years since the last of such occurrence. So is that going to happen in March or late February 2024? We'll have to wait and see, but I have very low confidence in that right now. So we'll have to see what the trend is throughout the week. Let's see what uh, We'll have to see what the trend is throughout this week. We'll see what other models are showing. And of course, I'm here to keep you guys posted as per usual. And that is it for right now. That is it for this update. And I really do hope you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.